So the former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers is now advising Joe Biden on economic policy, including plans to revive the U.S. economy after the coronavirus pandemic. Now, I'm going to break down why Larry Summers is horrible and why this news should piss you off. So Summers worked under Obama and Clinton. He was heavily involved in the 2009 recovery that, of course, favored big banks. But let me give you a lot more specifics here. So first, um, from Jennifer Epstein here, Summers has been critical of some ideas proposed by Sanders and Warren. In 2013, a group of Dem senators, including Warren, made clear they would oppose his nomination to the Fed. Now, just as an aside, this news also makes me think that Elizabeth Warren's not going to be the vice president. Not that I'm arguing for her to be the vice president anyways, but there is a lot of rumors right now that she will be Biden's VP. But if they hired Larry Summers as an advisor on economic policy, I don't know how that's going to work with Elizabeth Warren. But then again, (laughs) we saw Elizabeth Warren pretty much sell her soul during the primary, so maybe she doesn't care. But that's not the main story here. Moving on. Uh, Maria Langholz tweets out in his book, Reed Hunt, a member of President Obama's transition team, recalls that Larry Summers rejected plans from the transition team to create green banks and overhaul the nation's energy grid toward clean energy. So Summers is also horrible on the climate. I'll get to more on that when I get to um, uh, the Sunrise Movement's response to this as well. First, David Sirota here tweets out, Joe Biden has chosen as his economic advisor the main Democratic proponent of the China PNTR deal and Wall Street deregulation. Apparently, Biden may really have meant it when he said, quote, nothing will fundamentally change. That is an exact quote from Joe Biden when he was speaking to wealthy donors during the primary. A hire like Larry Summers shows people that David Sirota is exactly right. Nothing will fundamentally change for most people. Um, or I should say, especially for uh, the wealthiest, if Larry Summers is going to be heavily involved in Biden's economic agenda. More here from Maria Langholz. Summers was a prominent advocate for the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, which was halted under the Obama administration after pressure from the climate movement. Um, Walid Shahid here. Sometimes Biden's economic advisor, Larry Summers, just sounds like a Republican. Summers arguing against a wealth tax. Quote, I'm looking for a single case when an individual, because of his personal wealth, had disproportionate influence on the society. (laughs) How about every single person that is hired in every single administration? There are always people that have a lot of wealth, people that work on Wall Street. Billionaires largely fill up these administrations. That's the disproportionate influence right there, including Larry Summers himself. Just amazing. He can't even remove himself from uh, that own reality or his own reality. Um, So this is a story from 2013 when uh, Larry Summers was a potential uh, was potentially going to be the uh, the head of the Fed. Um, Larry Summers here, or sorry, Larry Summers' record should rule him out of the Fed chairmanship. There are a couple of quotes here. I'm going to pull from. Doubts about Summer's fitness for the job abound. A paid consultant to Citigroup, hedge fund D.E. Shaw, and other companies, he's immersed in Wall Street both personally and professionally, posing the question of how he can possibly be trusted to regulate banks. He was also famously among the pushers of the deregulatory obsession that gripped Washington in the 1990s and early 2000s, which sowed the seeds of the financial crisis that cost our economy at least $14 trillion. These wealthy people always fail upward. And it's because the ones that hire them, the people that that uplift these individuals, are the only people benefiting from decisions like this, where everybody else is getting screwed. There is more, though. Let's also not forget the massive risks he took with Harvard University's endowment while serving as president, which cost the university more than $1 billion, and his astonishing comments on women's lack of intrinsic aptitude in math and science, so he's also a sexist. Then there's his defense of Enron during the California energy crisis, and not forgetting the weird offensive memo he, memo he signed while chief economist at the World Bank that suggested dumping toxic uh, waste in third world countries. Everything wrong with global economic policy right here in uh, Larry Summers. There is a little more here I want to share, a quote from him, which is just incredible. 
check out this entry by Summers in the 2007 Encyclopedia of Economics created by the Free Market Foundation Liberty Fund, Inc. In it, Summers effectively blames jobless workers and wacky programs like unemployment insurance for long-term unemployment. Under the header, What Causes Long-Term Unemployment, Summers writes, quote, Unemployment insurance increases the measure of unemployment by inducing people to say that they are job hunting in order to collect benefits. Government assistance programs contribute to long-term unemployment by providing an un- by providing an incentive and the means not to work. This is exactly the view of the current Trump administration. Like, in terms of economic policy, what would be the difference if Larry Summers is the guy in charge? What the hell would be the difference from what is going on right now with Trump in terms of economic policy to Joe Biden? It would be exactly the same. Nowhere does Summers mention that macroeconomic conditions like, say, a deep recession that follows decades of deregulation, downsizing and outsourcing could explain why workers are sitting on the sidelines. No, it's those pesky workers who are taking advantage of government largesse to remain idle. Is this the person we want presiding over the Fed's mandate of maximum employment? Luckily, he never got that job. But uh, being in Biden's administration uh, would not be... uh, much help. More here. Response from Justice Democrats. So progressive groups were coming out against this decision. Larry Summers' legacy is advocating for policies that contributed to the skyrocketing inequality and climate crisis we're living with today. We hope Joe Biden publicly rejects Summers' role as an economic advisor to better earn the trust of our generation. Last response here. This is from Evan Weber. He is the uh, co-founder and political director at Sunrise Movement. Larry Summers belongs nowhere near the White House for 100 reasons, but especially because of his terrible track record on climate. Joe Biden isn't serious about climate or not going back to the way things were before with guys like this around. So he, Larry Summers, would be a total slap in the face to millions of people, to working people, I mean, if you care about climate, if you care about economic policy, if you care about Wall Street, if you care about policy that actually is designed to help people and not the people that are already the wealthiest, but the vast majority of people, Larry Summers is a disgusting choice to have as an advisor on economic policy. And if Joe Biden doesn't realize that and doesn't get rid of him, I don't know how anybody, uh, how this campaign, how Democrats expect to win. And this is why I discuss again and again in various stories. I don't think the Democratic Party really cares about winning. Because what have they shown in terms of understanding how to win voters over? They are making all the same mistakes as Hillary Clinton did in 2016. So in repeating history, how do they expect to win this time? Now, I've discussed before, there, he may still be able to win. Biden may still be able to win if with enough um, anti-Trump voters. Those people do exist. A lot of them exist. And many people, I can maybe imagine, didn't come out for Hillary in 2016 because they thought Hillary was going to win. The media told them Hillary's definitely going to beat Trump, so they didn't bother coming out. If those people come out this time, it may be enough to put Biden above. But why take the risk? You should be trying to chase after the voters, the 40% of the country that doesn't normally vote. And those are largely working class people, largely young people. By doing the exact same thing that Democrats have done for the last 30 years, you're not going to win those people over. People under 45 especially, the ones that are the most connected to information, they understand what the Democratic Party actually represents, what they've actually done how they've stood up for corporate interests over people. And if the Biden campaign continues making these same mistakes, those people aren't going to come out. And it's not going to be the fault of those people that don't want to vote for you. It's going to be the fault of the Biden campaign.